97. Okay, so I don't want to mess up your name because everyone's been telling me your last name is pronounced differently. Don Richard. That is my name. I'm not trying to make it special. That is my father's name's given name. It's my dad's Haitian. My mom's Creole. Yeah. The middle name is Angelique. It's not like a gimmick. Yeah. My nephew's name is Francois. I promise it's not something yeah. we're trying to do. Yeah. So when you were young, did you have to correct all the no, teachers? No, because I'm from New Orleans. So everybody was saying it right. They knew our name. My dad was a musician. He was pretty big in New Orleans. So oh, Richard so awesome. was, my grandfather was like a president of the Zulu Ball. Whoa. So like the name was quite present yeah. in the city. It was a popular name. So and people knew it was Richard. That's so crazy. It's only when you go outside, they're like Richards. Yeah. <laughs> Richard's son. Richards and son, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the S's keep getting bigger yeah. and bigger. Yeah. Congratulations on Jimmy Fallon. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm excited. Now, this is big because you are not signed to a label, correct? I am not signed to a label. I am independent. I've been independent for three, almost four years now. Oh so I've done all my three albums that I've released, all the EPs that I've done, which is about four to five projects in total, uh, without a label or any major help at all. How do you like it in comparison to being to a label or signed to a team, whatever that capacity may be? I, I think I appreciate both sides of the spectrum, right? Really? So I was I, I saw mainstream. I do understand why labels do what they do. I was just talking to someone outside earlier, and they were saying things are systems. I agree with that. Yeah. I think uh, the label has a system, and it worked for them. And I think being a manufacturer thing at that time was beneficial for Danity Kane and Dirty Money. I think in this sense, though, there's an appreciation of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And I think... I love the idea of running my own business. It is very hard. Yeah. It's like running a small business or oh, creating yeah. your own your own but yeah. with that comes your own creativity. Right. And you're your own you're, on your, you're your own boss and I like that. Um but it is difficult. Were you worried when you decided to go independent? I was worried on many many different levels. Worried that I wouldn't wouldn't be accepted. Uh, because I was going to do what I always wanted to do, the music that I wanted to do, worried that people wouldn't understand it and I wouldn't be able to afford it. Of course, that's a big factor. You know, these factor. are big things Absolutely. that, you know, you got to know your market, your demographic, and if they will even receive you and if, if the product's any good, right? Um, then I got out of my head mm. and went into the, art, in, into the art spectrum of things, into the hearts, the passion, and I just went for it. Yeah. Just kind of leaped and just said, well, if they hate it, then I'll just be... There'll be a thousand copies of shit in my, excuse me, yeah. there'll, there'll be just boxes in my room that I ne no one would ever listen to. Yeah. Um, but I, I wanted to show the world me. Yeah. I had been, I got in a line as a kid right. for a show and then I got thrust into something. I think people don't realize New Orleans at that time wasn't popular. We only had Lil Wayne. Like, I was that gonna was say, it. Yeah, it was just but Wayne, there was yeah. no female pop artist. Yeah. We didn't have reality TV shows. So like, we had few, but it wasn't, I didn't know what I was getting into. Oh, yeah. So I didn't know about personality. I just thought I was kind of giving myself as a job. Yeah. So this was kind of the first time people were really seeing me not forced to do anything. Right. It was just me doing what I wanted to do. And I had no idea uh, if it would be received or not. Wow. What, I guess what kept pushing you to make music? Because you can look at other people who might have taken that route and they yeah. just said, hey, look, I'm going to fall back. This isn't for me. Absolutely. Um. I come from a music, my father's a musician. Right. Uh, Matt, he has a master's in music. Uh, his band in the 70s was a really great, really big band. Um, but beyond that, I mean, to give you perspective, my grandfather had a brain tumor. Yeah. They took his, uh, he had surgery on his brain. He couldn't speak. Oh my gosh. I tell you two days after I went to see him, he got on the piano and played. Oh my gosh. Couldn't speak, couldn't say our names, but he had the staple still in his head. I have the video to prove that. That's on <gasps> my grandmother on, on life. That is my family. Like so, it's just somebody. It's just what we know. So music has always been a passion. Art has always been kind of that thing for me. Um, and then coming from New Orleans, yeah, it's just a, it's it's in us, and uh, that's the motivation. I really wow. love this. I'm like I'm not. It's not a joke to me. It's not something like I want to be famous or some. Like it never was that for me. My father and my mother gave us really good lives. They were not wealthy, but. They did well. We right. were in private school. They did okay for themselves. So I understand that music can be a, a good thing where you just do it and you have a good life. Right. So I just wanted to do music and have a good life. That was the aim. If anything else came with it, that's bonus. That's brownie. Yeah, right, that's right, brownie right. points. But for the most part, if I did what I loved and I did it well, 
then that was enough and I could support my family, then you, you're rich. Yeah. You're wealthy. Yeah. That's Absolutely. just what I know. That's a, that's a Southern perspective. Yeah. It's an old fashioned perspective. It's a beautiful yeah, perspective. Yeah. You know, and so like, that's kind of how I, all I knew. Yeah. And, um, I wanted that same that same path. Yeah, you've been nonstop. You've been working because a lot yeah. of people might look at Danny D. Kane or whatnot, and you even signing to Diddy or whatever. But you've continued to put Never albums, stop. EP, Never mixtapes. You've continued to go. Yeah. Redemption came out yes. last year, and now you're gonna go on tour for I'm it. Going correct? on tour I, at the Fallon we just did. We're gonna go on tour. We're going. Uh, we're doing the Eastern tour. We're coming here July 22nd nice. at the Knitting Factory in Brooklyn. Um, and you know, every time I come to New York, I was we just I started here. Yeah. I was discovered here. It's so crazy. Um, so the love here is 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 nuts. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. We're gonna do a uh, East Coast tour, and they can get the tickets um, at my website dharmashar.net, and you can get all the tickets. And then we have a European tour. Nice. I'm also doing Pitchfork Fest. Wow. That's gonna be in Chicago. That's crazy. I'm doing Sonar in Barcelona. You working? I'm working, but that's good. That shows the indie artist that just because you're independent doesn't mean you can't compete with mainstream. People yes. think that you're when you're independent, your the quality of your work means it's for lack of a better word, shitty. Yes. You know, like you can't yep. compete, you know. And then because of that, you know, these award shows don't put us in the categories. No. We're not we're not with the BETs we're not, and no. we would like to be. Right. But because we're a little bit in alternative, a alternative, right. So I really aim and I hope that like these award shows see that with like people like Chance yeah. and these new up and coming indie artists like myself, they start making categories for us, putting us in here because we're actually doing some really incredible things with half the budget if mm. not none the budget yeah. of what these major labels or artists are doing how are you coping i mean this is a lot of work maybe because you know i work in the industry it takes so much time energy and money yeah to create this you're telling truth here you know what i yeah. mean and so yeah. you i i appreciate you continuing you. it's easier to back out it is I, i've thought of her many of days to back out yeah out sounds good she's a cute little girl yeah. but um nah uh it was never an option for me, you know, like, honestly, it's what I love. I could do other things. I really could. But it all comes back to it's like you just speak to people and what you do. You could right. do other things. You're beautiful. You could model. You could do these things. But what you do, whatever it is to get on a mic and to, to talk to people, to, to, right. to touch people. It's your, it's your core. Right. It's just a core for me. I feel my most comfortable on stage. I feel like I was always different, a little bit off kilter when I was a kid. And now I get to talk to those same people and I, I get to have a movement that yeah. looks like me. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, when I was younger, we didn't have a Grace Jones. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the, a, a lot of brown girls that were on the alternative realm of things. Right. On the tech side of things, on the animation side of things. Right. I didn't really have that. We're just now getting a female black comic writer right. from Marvel. That just right. happened this year, Roxanne Gay. Like, so I didn't have that cool stuff happening. I, so for me, I want to be able to be one of the, you know, the, a, a brown girl could be like, okay, maybe it's cool to be making my own app yeah. or doing VR or, or, or being an artist and maybe in electronic music or dance music or even R&B, whatever that may be. But they don't have to look the same to do it. Now, that was similar to Lazarus, correct? Yeah. So that hey was now. more you going into that you very... You better do your homework hey, on me. You, you the know, first. They don't <laughs> never do their homework. That's, yeah. Yes. So okay. th I would say that's where you tapped into that. Yeah, Lazarus definitely speaks to that, that underdog mentality, the rebirth of someone who um, kind of is slept on. And we even did it with the visual. We just released a visual that's pretty unique where it's an interactive visual. Right. You can touch the screen and manipulate it. So each person that watches the video sees it differently. It's so great. So you can so bend great. it. So the first half is a representation of dance culture. So you take choreography because I love, I mean, I grew up yeah. dancing, um, but you don't do it on a flat surface, right? Yeah. You take it and you put it into a 3D world and you manipulate it. And I thought that that would be really interesting to see it from a different perspective, to see the dance and the art from a different perspective. And we've really been doing that all, with all the videos and the visuals. Monty right. Marsh, the direct, my director, and working with Sam um, and Isaac, uh, Kabibo. Huh, they're really incredible uh, digital artists. These are people who are like taking chances and risking their art with me right. uh, to do something really innovative. And really, there's not a lot of female, no, female artists doing it, let alone black, let yes. alone indie. Yes, absolutely. You know, and I just think that I know we're giving the men love right. on what they do. But we're out here doing it, too. And I think, I, and I was telling my manager, Juliet, like, I wish they would, you know, 
as a culture, we would really show love to the brown girls doing that because I know we love chanting and on the weekend when they first started out right. as indie artists, but there are females out here that are doing some really incredible things with nothing. And I think we need to show that same amount of love to the female, the females too, not just in hip hop right. and not just in R&B, right. but there are black girls in electronic. There are yep. black girls in dance. There are black girls in folk. There are other girls out there doing songwriting, doing tech, doing animation that I think we need to start looking at in a bigger spectrum. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you feel that your fans are different than Danny Kane, or do you feel like a good amount have, you know, followed you through this? I feel like I had them. Um, I got a train of different people. Right. I like. I feel like I still got my DK fans, who to me are one of the dopest fan bases right. you could ever have, because they just love us when we right. are just shitty. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm so grateful because we didn't mess that up way too many times and I'm you know I'm still so sad about that but I, I think that they still stick with us yeah that's the you know so they're still with us and then we've got the dirty money heads who just understand classic great music. music come right. on now you know what yeah. I mean like I can't deny that like Puff knew what, what the hell he was doing with that and then I've got the kids who were like me, you yeah. know, like the DJs, the the ravers, the the tech kids, the geeks, the gamers, the nerds, the right. the crazy, the misfits, the gays, the straights, the trans who have come along with me and they feel what I'm talking about because I relate to them. So when you go to a show, it's real colorful. That's awesome. You got the dude smoking the weed and then you got... <laughs> You know, the trans girl in full glitter and full gloss. And then you got the guy next to him giving full dance and it's never beautiful. stopping on the show. And that's really interesting. And I never thought I ever would have brought a crowd like that together. But then my mom said to me, Dawn, that kind of makes sense, though. You was that kid. You yeah. know, you, you, you know, like you were all of those things. I could still be black, yeah. but love Bjork mm. and still love to be able to draw and not be an Oreo yeah. or not be different because I'm just, I'm still black. I'm still from the night ward. Yeah. But yeah, I do know who Portis head is. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Do you feel like you get backlash for that? I feel like I'm misunderstood for that. Got it. But I feel like that's changing. Right. Artists like Solange, SZA, uh, Kalila, yeah. FKA Twigs, all these powerful black, Abra, Beautiful. They're Bosco, every, oh, these, dope, named are amazing. these dope girls who are now people are, who have been there absolutely but people are now just saying oh i like them you yeah. know what i mean like i think they're coming and we're here and we're here we've been here yeah but now you guys are just starting to see it because mainstream has been saying it yeah yep it's a cosign yep. you guys it seems like mainstream needs, needs a cosign for you to say okay now i like it right um but we we've been here and ain't nothing wrong with that you know but we are here and we're we're on a different wavelength and nothing's wrong with that i think Absolutely. We're just misunderstood. Yeah. I think they we've only society gives you a picture oh, yeah. and of what it's supposed to be. I think, you know, Grace came in and was shook she shook shit up. Yep. She shook it up. And that you know, we had one and then it you know, it got quiet again. And yep. I think every so often someone comes and they shake things up and then people say, Okay, maybe we need to be paying attention a little bit more. Absolutely. That's so, how it always works. Yeah. That's how it always yeah, is. Yeah, so we're just shaking things up, you know, we're just showing our culture and mainstream culture and just popular culture that it doesn't have to look the same. I think the people that are there now are beautiful, but I just don't think we need to have tunnel vision on that. I exactly. think there's a lot of things going on that we're just not looking into that maybe we should. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> How, ever since you went independent, do you talk to Diddy? Not as often oh. as I'd like, but that's the homie forever. Yeah. People will never understand that relationship. You know, like, people didn't know that Puff had bought me out of a contract wow. prior to even getting on the show. Really? So I had loyalty to that, you know? And that's a respect that I understand that I loved my group, and I know that I, like, it wasn't a... I chose Puff over my group at the time. It was more of when someone does that, where I come from, you got to respect that on a yeah. large level. So I gave loyalty to him. And I think I'll never forgive. I never forget that. And my father and my, my mother for what we gone through, we'll never forget that. And I think with all his crazy, I look at things like that as loyalty. So yeah. I was loyal to him and I paid my dues back like a businesswoman should. Right. Until he said, okay, your dues are paid, and then I left. Not, I'm going to leave you after you did me something. And then just... And a solid, yes. and they say, oh, by the way, thank you for buying out my contract, but now I'm going to go over here. I just never said anything wow, about I that. I kept that contract And out. I never told anybody. I took all the hate that came with it, that people thought I had chose, didn't chose my, choose my group. I just took it. 
yeah. because I've, I, I, it's, it's a, it's a loyalty thing for me. It's a respect. Absolutely. You know, and I don't, I didn't want to get shelved. I didn't want to get bit, like financially and business wise. It just wasn't smart. Yeah. So I wanted to pay my dues. So I did. And I always respect him for that. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's nice. What, what's the best advice he's ever given you? He I'm sure give, there's a bunch. He don't give advice. Puff is smart. He does it in his actions. He never sleeps. He has people always around him and he pays attention to the pulse. He's a marketing, he's a marketing man. Yeah. More than anything. Mm -hmm. um, and he's blessed with an ear. That's two very powerful, powerful things. Yeah. <laughs> right? And so if you're smart, you don't take advice, you pay attention. Mm. So I just paid attention, you know? And I and and that's it. You know, it wasn't all perfect. It wasn't all great. Yeah. He's exactly what people say he is, yeah. but he's also he gave me a shot. I don't have the story that you have. I have the I got, I got out alive. Yeah. And I got out with a business. And I don't have no bad stories. There was no that was only support. Wow. So if you do good by other people, they'll do good by you. I agree. And so that's what I tried to do. I didn't do it perfectly. It probably was imperfect and it probably looked crazy and I probably made mistakes and I totally did make mistakes along the way. But I did the best that I could. But you've some... owned up to it. Yeah, you I know never I mean? have. I've never got the vibe that you were scared. I wish, I wish more would see it that way. Yeah, I you know? mean. Yeah, but I, but I am. I said, you know, you do your best, but I am still a girl from New Orleans, Louisiana, yeah. from the night ward. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> there's going to be all kind of imperfect, imperfections and yeah. all kind of uh, in yeah. there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm still my mama's child. <laughs> I'm going to do my best, yeah. you know, but I'm still my mom's kid and yeah. and I'm still going to handle certain things if I don't feel that they need to be, you know. Right. But it doesn't mean that it's always right, but I do my best. Yeah. Did you actually fight Aubrey? I didn't fight her. I um I did not like, you know, I I think I was a certain person in the group in the beginning and I allowed a lot of things right. which made it comfortable for that to be happening to you, right? This, as but we got older. And I, my insecurities weren't there anymore. And as women, the same reason Drea didn't want to stay is the same reason I did the choice that I did. Right. You know, I don't like disrespect. I should have handled it a little bit better, but I don't, I don't like the entitlement. Yeah. And we're, we're, as a culture, we're starting to see how big entitlement really is. Yes. I don't think it's on purpose. I don't think it's vindictive. I think we are all just very different girls. Right. We're raised completely different. I reacted how I would react a sister. Yeah. Like if you step out of line, I'm gonna check you. Right. I checked her. She's not used to being checked like that. We're different cultures. Right. And so she did what she would do in that situation. It just, just we're just different. Yeah. You know. And and I I I, I admitted my reality to that. But I will I will say this: as a black woman, I will never be disrespected. Right. Can you handle things differently? Absolutely. But I really believe it is nothing more than we've said our horrible things to each other. I don't agree with the things that have been said about me. Most of them are some most of them are not true. Right. But I think they believe that. I, be, I think that they believe what they believe. And I've come to in terms with the fact that we are all just very different. Yeah. I wish we could do more. But I do. Under, people have to understand we are really five different girls from five completely different walks of life. Oh, yes. And we try to make it work. I just think we're very different. Yeah. We all just wanted the different things. And that's okay. I've and come to is. terms with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Is that why would is it safe to say that's the reason why the reunion really yeah, didn't I happen? Just, yeah. I, I think we're genuinely good girls at heart. I just think we wanted different things. And I was at a place in my life where I just I wasn't accepting the format that we were still on as kids. I'm not gonna Makes be sense. Yeah. And I Drea wasn't either. Um I do wish we could have handled it a bit better for the fans, you know, what, super sad. I feel that I feel a lot of times like the sides from the ladies are, are never heard. It's always people putting these ideas, these rumors out there. Yeah, but and I hurt. think we all saw a petty. Yeah, I think petty. I had a lot of petty. <laughs> I was petty. It's Petty Jenkins over yeah. here. I think we all were petty. And yeah. I think that that's that's human, too. I think they have the right to be petty because they people react on perspective. Absolutely. You know, I think people think what they think and they get the information that they get think and then they come on and they deliver it. I know who I am. I know what I, what I would do and what I wouldn't. I think I get quiet when things get violent, but that doesn't always help because then people just take a side right. in this life in this time, they take the side of whatever the truth is given. And then with media, you know, oh, that's you, people only getting what they receive. So I understand that. I think people just getting what they 
what they think is the truth. And yeah. I'm, you know, that's fine. You've been hurt along the way, but I think we a lot of people forget that as well as entertainers, you're still a human being. You yeah, st- I think hurt. we all are. And we females, which yes. is my God. Yeah, which is a whole different Which is a ball whole game. different months and times. Yes. It gets real crazy. <laughs> Petty gets, she gets really crazy. Um, yeah, I, I think the worst thing of all of that is that we let our fans down, you know, mm. and I'll never forgive us for that. Yeah. But I think we understand as women that we did the best that we could. And I think I will never fault those girls for that. You know what I mean? I don't think that truths were told, but I think people did what they needed to do to get out of the holes they needed to get out of. And I know who I am. I would never do anything vindictive to nobody. I do know that I have petty in my life. I do know that when I'm angry, I do things, but I do think I also um, could always handle things a bit better. We all can. Yeah, but but I never denied that. I never, I've always been upfront about that. Um, But I am proud of what's come of it. Yeah. I needed that to happen because look where I am now as an entrepreneur, as a businesswoman. And from what I'm seeing through reality TV, through life, we all doing the same. We all going through the same stories, like even the best of us, you Mm -hmm. know, Uh, even the biggest celebrities. Everybody have they mess up. They get in media and you hear all these crazy things that broke fights, things. And you just we're human. Absolutely. When 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 you hear a reality show now, mm. do you look at it? Completely? It's not a reality show though, right? It's more scripted. It's very scripted. Mm-hmm. When you came in, do you feel that it's changed so much, or do you feel during your time it was actually authentic to being reality, and or was it, or is it all just the same? I think it's scripted? a business. Yeah, okay. it's a business, and it's a smart business if you do it the right way, right? Um, I think in the beginning though, Puff was on it man making the band was new and he just didn't script that he put girls in a room and he said figure it out figure it out and that's the best tv you could ever give someone because it's an honest process yep it's an honest process and i'd be like it, that that i think that's why people loved it, it was because it was authentic Abs- yes. this is who we were we were trying to you know the only thing with that is then we have to survive after it <laughs> yes. and most girl groups who are sisters can't even sur- stay together At all. let alone five girls different nationalities different Sheesh. upbringings Sheesh. Compl- Sheesh. one wants to shannon wanted to be a country singer so <laughs> And so she signed cute. a bad boy. Yeah. Like, this is what we were working with. Like, yeah. you know, we did good, goddamn. We tried yes. to figure that out, you know? Like, <laughs> we did the best we could, you know? But I think, I think, and look at me. I'm in electronic music now. I'm in tech. Like, no one would have ever saw that path for me, you know? Yeah. I think we were all just very different walks of life. And um, I think that's what made it cool. And what makes it cool now is that um, I can incorporate that into my own business and take that those lessons and put it into the um, the music that I do now. And so my music still has that pop influence. It still has those things. The choreography still has like this Lazarus video that just came yep. out. I mean, it, yes, you need it, to watch it. If it's you an old to it. it's and it's an old to my old NBA dancing days, yes. my old Danity Kane days, where I was doing the eight count, and that's still in me. That doesn't change. You right. know, I'm still that girl. And we'll see that on tour. Yeah, I, I never stopped dancing. AJ, my choreographer, like none of that's changed. I still give an eight count. Lorianne and that's that whole little choreography that's still present, and it's never gonna leave. An eight count is in my soul. How have you been able to be so transparent? Because I feel like it's so hard for a lot of artists to be authentically who they are on and off the camera, right? Right. Is I, it just the I don't process, know. I, the I'm years? Just me. I, I've always just been me. Like, yeah. I don't know. But I, I think that goes back to when I was in New Orleans, when I got on that show, I didn't know what a show was. I was makeup messed up hair nappy <laughs> yellow hair wearing the wrong colors i had fairy patches ironed on my pants Gosh. if you didn't realize guys that i was a nerd you missed it if you didn't <laughs> realize that it was i was always that girl like i didn't know i was supposed to be a personality so i came on the same way i am now um I don't know how else to be but this person, yeah. you know? I think, though, I am a bit m- misunderstood because people in reality TV only get layers. You only get layers of Absolute. what people yes. are. So I'm excited with my new album and with this new music and with people seeing me and what I do with Golden Heart, Black Heart, and, and Redemption Heart now. Um, they get to see me before Danity Kane was. Like, when I was me as Dawn just in New Orleans and what I loved and that person mm. who danced in the NBA, who, like, we had to wear clothes 
in the NBA, if you watch dance, if you see it like this, it's like a strap over the nipple and yeah. <laughs> you wear no clothes. Right. Yeah. So like I've always been a girl who's appreciated all these different aesthetics of being in something like that, but then also loving um, electronic music and being in raves and having pink hair and then dro- like all these different things. I get to now expose to to the people who've never really known that part and that side of me. Yeah. What made you want to respond to those who were talking about possibly plastic surgery or mm-hmm. whatnot? What I get it. What? But I get it. They're so above that. But what made you want? Well, to... there's no wrong, nothing wrong with plastic yeah. surgery if that's what you want to get. Look, I think I've come to terms with knowing if I say that I didn't get plastic surgery, they'll say I'm a liar. Right. If I say that I did, they'll be like, I told you so. I just I stopped trying to. But even if you did, it doesn't matter. But I get what but you I'm mean. But I'm saying I stopped because yeah. then I would go and say and they say you lied yeah. when I say no. Then I didn't. And I, it just. If that's what they need to feel, then fine. I, like, I know who the hell I am. Like, right. if I look crazy to you, I'm sorry that that works. But there's got a lot of girls out here, got a lot of different faces and Everything. things. And y'all really love them. So I, if that's not, if I'm not your cup of tea and you think I got a whole new face, that's totally fine. Yeah. Like, I, I, that doesn't bother me. I don't really care. That's so minuscule to me. It's yeah. just, it used to frustrate me. But now I just, I've learned this is just the way this, the, where we no are now. What you do. This is where we are now. That's so minor to me. If that's what they feel, then yeah, okay. Yeah, and like you said, it does, if that's what you want to do. I don't have problem. I don't yeah. judge people on that stuff because I, you know, if you need to get your shit fixed, get it. Yeah, um, <laughs> and if you got it, then live ooh, your life. Ooh, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, that doesn't bother me. I don't. I thought what you wrote was pretty interesting. I was doing some research and it was just interesting. Like even they would say I look a certain way before. Yeah, I was a tranny. Yeah, they and said then, I look like a man. Exactly. Absolutely. And it's I think and it's now a, I look like sin, and then I'm dark skin, and yeah. then I'm. I so yeah, it gets fun. It's fine. It's fine. You, do your friends tell you get off Twitter? Get off. No, everything. because my friends know me. Like yeah. they, I, the same dawn I was. But I, my friends, I've known since I was two. Juliet, my pimp, they met him since New Orleans on John Lee Drive. Like that's in New Orleans, the week. My, they, I'm the same dawn. Yeah. They're not surprised that I do the things I do because I've been the same dawn. Now people who are new, who maybe caught me, then I'm making a band, and then now not since they don't. You know, they're only going off. I get why people think what they think, but I, you know, I don't. They're going to think it anyway. Yeah. I don't care. Like, I, that's that one's a little bit, like, minor to me. Good. Well, I mean, the music speaks for itself. The focus, the fact that you've been independent. Yeah. And unless you're in this game, you really don't understand the sacrifice someone does yeah. to be independent. Yeah. It's a lot of work, man. Yeah, it is a lot of work. And and to me, that's the, the stuff I wish people would focus on like if I, I just really because it's some re- we're doing some really innovative things right for me working with uh tech stars a tech company and working with the, their music department and trying to find really innovative ways to bring music to tech you know us doing a usb where we put the album on a usb with a table book with vr content right i get you want to know about my face and, and my skin right. but yo i just i put a usb out with an album with right. vr content on it i get it but yeah Look at the music, look at the work, look at the art. I'm out here. I'm right. out here really trying working. to figure this out. So I get that y'all. So if you don't if you don't like my face, just go but then look over here and then see you know what I'm saying? Like then I get use it. your ears and listen to the music. We over here doing stuff. We out here. <laughs> we are out here, you know? And so like I get it. But that stuff it, that's why I stopped responding because I don't it, I don't care. Right. Because we're out here as a business. I'm trying to build a business. And I'm trying to show a new lane for black girls. Yeah. We only think we have to be one thing. I'm walking into these meetings, into these tech meetings, and I'm the only black girl. Sad. I want that to be something else. There's something else happening here. Yeah. There's an undercurrent. The underground is flourishing with beautiful brown girls kicking right. ass. Right. Let's, let's, let's get off of our high horses for a second. Right. And let's like. Let's look at what the pulse is. There's yeah. some things happening. Because if we really look up, we could be really proud right. of what we're doing. And continuing to Yeah, go. and build it. And build it. For a young girl who's watching right now who might have self-esteem issues yeah. and doesn't really know how to deal with it. She's, yeah. People are picking on her and whatnot. Yeah. What's some advice you would give her? I'm you. Yeah. I'm you. I didn't love myself till 30. Wow. You understand? So I, I'm you. And and that takes time. But know that 
my issue was no one was telling me it was okay to be me, mm. right? So you just know you it's okay to just live right up in that whatever that is you are, that sauce that you in that may be different a little and you don't fit, that's some good sauce right there. Stay in that sauce and learn to fit in that. that like I wish I would have said in my, I was I was fly. Right. I was wearing Jinko jeans and not Jinko jeans with the bag. I was fly. I had my little animal. I was good. And I was, <laughs> I was, I was fly in my little thing. But, I, you know, I was told that that wasn't, that wasn't right. I think if you're in a system and you feeling like you don't fit in and you're awkward and people are bullying you, just know, like, that's sauce. You, you, you got something. And if you cater that something, you gonna get wings, mm. and them wings gonna look a different color than everybody else's. They are gonna be bigger than everybody else's, and then when you get to that place where you finally can fly, they're mm. not gonna be able to touch you yes. because your level is so unique. Um, and that's okay. Like sit in your sauce for a second. It's okay. It's okay to be different. I love that you said that. Yeah, I it's was. So I important. was them. I was them. I was super different. Yeah. I was super awkward. Yeah. Yeah, I was I, I was a, I, crazy. <laughs> my mom was confused. She was yeah. like, my God, can't you just wear pink? She yeah. was trying to figure that out. She was so upset at first. And now we had a really good talk. And my mom is exceptional now because she's she gets me too now, you know. Mm. I love this. I, I'm yeah. so happy to see your journey going the way you want it. Thank to go. you very much. I'm, I'm happy to be able to speak on it. I was scared to speak on it at times. I, I just felt so like. It, people wouldn't get it and then I realized I don't I don't Who really cares? care if they do now I don't I really don't I yes. genuinely don't and I think my work speaks to that so like if you haven't heard my music if you haven't listened to Golden Heart Black Heart Redemption it speaks to that young girl yes. it does it speaks to the misfits to put their armor on to to go through life with your sword in hand and that that's a metaphor for if you're in school whatever that case may be that music really builds you um and it's you know it takes you through each period the naive moments of your life mm. the black era when I, you get really dark and you make oh, wrong yes. choices and then the redemption when when you can dance in your glory and in New Orleans when you have a funeral, you lose someone, you dance. Mm. You have a second line. Beautiful. And you celebrate the homecoming because you go into your next life. So it's never really a negative. It's always a positive. And the album kind of speaks to that. I love your energy. Literally, I love it. I'm so happy for you. I was excited to see you on I Jimmy Fallon. I was excited. Fallon. Thank you, man. And it's, it's such a, it's so awesome what you're doing without a label, without the support that Thank so many you. of these mainstream artists have and get. So I completely commend you. I love Thank it. You. Keep going. Thank Redemption. You. Thank you. The tour begins July. The tour begins in June, June. overseas and then July here. But New York, right. just understand 22nd it's home it's this home. is your second home it is kind of my second home um and then uh if you want to get the dates go to dawnshard.net all the dates are there we got some special surprises coming where we've got merch coming nice. we've got all kinds of like really great things um coming along with the uh the the um the tour and then just check out the, the beautiful visuals we just did that just came out and just get into the fact that we were indian we were just on fallon with like no label hey <laughs> Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. <laughs>